Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, January the 28th, and this is the pre-market edition of the Futures in 5. Taking a look again at a daily chart, what we want to see is how the traders are behaving in general, and that's why we're looking at the daily chart. We're seeing that we broke right out of this very tight compression area. It's four days wide. We popped up, and now, today, we are moving back down. My suspicion is that when we fall into Thursday's price action area, we're going to see the first set of buyers show up. In general, we're in a mixed bag with a lot of cross current, but in the end, a deep dip going to give us buy zones. So those of us that trade our stocks and not the futures market, you really want to wait for that support action to engage before you take a long, or you want to wait for a resistance action to engage before you take a short. We are in an FOMC week, and so that probably is going to lead to some whipsaws, right? That those meetings begin today or tomorrow, can't remember. We have the release on Wednesday, and those are really important things that the market is uh, very mixed about, not really quite sure um, if there are any surprises that the Fed Chair Powell has for us. Okay, same sort of storyboard in the NQ, looking at it from a daily perspective. Here we are. This is the tightest range. This was Thursday. Friday punch that looks like a breakout, only it doesn't break the highs. The near-term highs sit engaged as primary resistance. We're going to be looking for that as well in this case from a primary support area. Thursday's price action all the way down here. Listen, you're going to think the chart is going to break down. It may, but it's not going to trend. And so I'm pretty firm in saying that because the regular momentum puts trending motion on the opposite side of probability. And so that's really what we've got to pay attention to. First pass bounces into support, likely to engage. This is the VPOC, the volume point of control, and buyers are showing up there. So we'll have to watch for this zone, see how well we recapture some of this fade. Remember, if we get up here and hold, this is the next region that we move into, right? We have to look at both sides of the formation because we've got mixed currents across the board. Here we are taking a look at the YM. Same sort of thing. Old resistance shows up as resistance on Friday. Here we are. This is already in Thursday's range. Why is it reacting this way? Well, Caterpillar didn't do so well. Um, earnings not ideal. And so we've got the fade down into Thursday's range. The YM has already completed this motion. It should begin to hold some sort of buying pressure right around these edges. If it doesn't, the next step is going to be into the auction vacuum at about 344 and then 265. This means the same thing. Whether you've got bullish or bearish trades going in your stocks, you need to wait for the edges to engage and don't think that a breakdown of your support is automatically a region to go short because the overall formation is a little bit of a mixed bag sideways action if you can see from the ym we've still got this wedge we're caught in between these two trend lines and you're going to see a lot of moving averages in there essentially getting to the top and then fading is the next step but our system clearly shows old resistance showing up as new resistance. Here we are taking a look at the CL. And this is like the same story over and over and over and over and over again. But this line in the sand that we like for the price to sit above, it's not going there. What does that mean? Does that mean it's breaking down? No. What it does mean is that it's heading into its next area of support. How do I know it's not breaking down? because momentum and price action together are telling me that I'm making higher lows and grinding through my highs here. So it is a battleground, but this battleground is still gauged with the weight and strength being on the buyer's side of motion. Doesn't mean we won't fade, but it does mean that if we fade, we won't end on the lows. That's just what the most likely formation is here to tell us. And so, you know, 
we look at the 5270 to 5220 area as potentially giving us support action and then another move up. We'll wait and see. You know, uh, the dollar has done quite a bit of fading and oil is priced in dollars. So we should see this kind of hold support and move upward. Just have to wait it out though. We can't guess in front of these. Here we are taking a look at gold. You know, I talked about 1300 being prior resistance, that it was going to be likely front and future resistance, which it has been, although it did break above um, 37 ticks above that 1300 area, but only 32 ticks above 1300.50, 35 ticks being a relative stop size these days in the chart. Now, could we move upward again? You betcha. What do we need to hold? 1296.80, old resistance, new support. Could we come all the way down into congestion? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're very far away from a flat adaptive moving average. That's going to bring us into support or congestion before we break out. Now, whether it's high support or low support, there's the gamble. Either you wait for it to come in, minimize your risk. You might get um, not, you might not get into the trade. But for me, I'm much better not getting into the trade than getting into the trade, having way too much risk, and then having the chart fail at critical support. That is my thought. Good luck today trading. Probably not going to have a lot of range. And uh, we do need to watch these edges. If they break out, we can follow them through and then cut and run. I don't really see any trending formations at this juncture at all today.